Uh, today, my guest is the director and professor at the Centre for Healthy Aging at the National University of Singapore. He's also a former CEO of the Buck Institute uh, for Research in Aging. He is also a chief scientific officer of Ponce de Leon, the manufacturer of Rejuvent. And uh, delighted to say I've got uh, Dr. Brian Kennedy with us today. Hey, Brian. Hi, great to be here. Great. So, uh, Brian, you've published a, a paper in Aging back in November 2021, uh, which showed that a dose supplement of uh, rejuvenant CA AKG, both a uh, female and male variant in humans, um, showed an eight year decrease in biological age after seven months of use. So is this actually the first longevity product trial in humans? And should we be excited about this? There are a couple others that have been done in humans, but this is certainly a, a bigger one, I think, than anyone has done. Uh, and it was uh, users taking the product. So they were on the seven months on average on the product, and we did DNA methylation testing before and after. So it's quite a striking finding, and uh, we're now backing it up, doing more placebo-controlled clinical studies to try to uh, uh, get a better feel, not just for if it's working, but mechanistically how it's working. So... Brian, let's talk about uh, AKG and why, uh, when we hit our 40s, levels drop off of AKG. You know, what effects does this have on the body? Yeah, I think that the cell is a highly engineered system to, and it uses metabolism to make all the reagents that it needs to function. Uh, that could be other proteins or, or replicating DNA. And so you need a lot of energy for a cell to work. AKG is a central metabolite uh, that's produced uh, during all of this energy production. And it's really at the interface between amino acid breakdown and carbohydrate metabolism. So it provides metabolic flexibility for the cell. Uh, it allows it to move reactions in different directions as needed. And when, when uh, molecules like that break down with age or go down with age, then it becomes much more difficult for the cell to adapt to its uh, environment. So I think it's really makes the cell more stress sensitive. I, 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 AKG is also in about 700 different reactions in the cell. And so, you know, if the levels are going down, all of those enzymes may, are not functioning as well. So um, with regards to rejuvenant and uh, perhaps the users of rejuvenant, uh, it appears that it has the most benefit for people sort of Gen X uh, through boomers and onwards, uh, people who maybe even be overweight or even have a disease such as cardiovascular disease or or cancer. So what's behind this from a metabolic standpoint? Well, you know, speaking specifically to aging, because, you know, we're not, haven't tried to do studies to treat diseases. So I don't want to make comment on that. But what we found surprisingly is that people that were biologically older than their chronologic age were the ones who responded the best. Um, AKG is used as an exercise supplement. So going in, I thought maybe it was the people that were going to the gym and uh, were aging well that might respond the most, but it seems to be the opposite. So if you were chronologically old at the time you started taking it, or if you were biologically older than your chronologic age, you had a big response. So that suggests that it may help people that are not aging optimally. And those are the ones probably in the most need. So we're excited about that. So rejuvenant, um, it contains uh, calcium uh, alpha ketoglutarate. So what's the science behind adding calcium? Well, we think the main functional agent is the alpha ketoglutarate, but you have to deliver it some way. If you just take the acid form of AKG, we tried that and it, it caused a little bit of heartburn and an empty stomach. I don't think it's toxic. It's just annoying if you, if you take it in the morning. Um, so... Instead, we uh, and, uh, uh, conjugated it to calcium so it could be uh, delivered better. And also, we made a sustained release version of it. And I think that's important because it helps the AKG get all the way to the small intestine before uh, it gets absorbed. And so it's not uh, broken down in the stomach. Or And I, I think that's a concern with some other forms of AKG. We want to deliver this to the intestine and deliver it slowly over a period of time. If you take a big bolus of it without the sustained release, it gets in the bloodstream, goes up, goes down immediately, and then it's gone. If you're releasing it slowly, the body may utilize it better. And how does that actually work in terms of the time release, just from a scientific perspective? That's quite interesting. Yeah, it's, it's a standard technology. It's lipidized, so it breaks down slowly over time, and it's more resistant to the acid in the stomach. Uh, and uh, so I don't, we're not, we, the formulation of AKG we chose is unique. 
it's based on technology that's uh, been used to deliver other molecules as well. And interestingly, um, rejuvenant makes a gender specific, uh, it comes in gender specific formulations for, for males and females. What's the science uh, and the reasoning behind that? Yeah, the, the surprising thing that when we did the animal studies is that uh, vit- certain vitamins were synergistic with AKG in terms of reducing frailty. So uh, vitamin A was uh, had a profound effect and even extended lifespan on its own in mice, but that was only in males. And we totally don't understand that. Um, so we uh, just chose to add vitamin A to the male product. Uh, vitamin D was beneficial to some extent in both sexes. But we were also hesitant to add three different ingredients because we hadn't done those studies yet in animals. And and frankly, when we try to combine things together, we get unexpected outcomes. Sometimes they one cancels out the longevity benefits of the other. And so, you know, I'm really cautious to people that are out there, you know, taking supplements and hacking aging. I think it's great to be on the cutting edge, but um, if you're taking, you know, two or certainly more than two things, <laughs> I can't predict what it's going to do. So it's uh, these inter- these uh, supplements and and drugs that affect aging all interact with each other, and uh, we need to understand that better through research. So let's let's talk about um, what's what's planned and what's going forward. I know that uh, Ponce de Leon is uh, is fundraising at the moment, Brian. So what is yeah. the uh, company planning in terms of its research trials into this next phase? So they have a couple of clinical studies going in the US, one of which is in data analysis phase and another is ongoing. Uh, here in Singapore, we're uh, planning to study with just the time release to AKG without the vitamins in, in the clinic because we're really uh, trying to understand its mechanism of action. I think if we know that, we'll be able to find ways to help people even more. And then of course, we're always looking for other combinations of AK- with AKG uh, that might be even more beneficial. So we continue the mouse studies, mixing and matching different uh, natural products to see what the right combinations are. I think ultimately personalization is gonna be important too. Uh, the you know AKG and vitamin A might be the right thing for one person, but AKG and something else might be the right thing for another. Uh, we need to better understand that who's going to respond to which interventions and the whole aging field is needs to do that. I think we're, we're at the cutting edge, but there's still a long way to go in longevity research. The nice thing is that I think that there are things out there now that are likely to help people. Great. Well, Brian, it's been a pleasure to catch up with you. I know you're a very busy guy. You've got your conference coming up this week, so we'll let you go. But thanks very much for joining us today. Uh, anytime. Thanks a lot.